Hey guys, what's up? It's Alex or Nuz Nuz, and welcome to my 1 to 120 cooking guide for RuneScape 3. I tried to make this guide as informational as possible, show you all the items that you could use while cooking to boost your XP, show you different methods, some that were fast, some that were cheap, and my recommended method, and try to give you guys some options and show you exactly how much profit you'll make or how much money you'll lose doing this. And I wish you all the best luck on your quest to 99 or 120 cooking, and I hope you guys enjoy the guide. So first, we're going to talk about items that you may want to use while training cooking. The first thing we're going to talk about is cooking gauntlets. Now these are obtained from the Family Crest quest, and they basically allow you to burn less food. So you'll wear them and they will decrease the uh, rate that you burn food. So as you can see on the screen here is a chart of the cooking level you need for each thing, the burn level, and the no burn level with gauntlets. So as you can see, something like raw shark, if you don't have cooking gauntlets, you will never not burn them. You'll always have a chance to burn them. But if you have cooking gauntlets, you'll never burn them again after level 94. So I would definitely recommend, I wouldn't even recommend, I would tell you you have to get cooking gauntlets before you train cooking. They are a must have, they're gonna save you so much money, so much time. Uh, you basically need them. They're going to help you with the whole way from level one to 99. So if you're an Iron Man or whatever, just get them as soon as possible. I would say you want them by level 50 or so cooking. So these are extremely important, probably the most important item we're gonna talk about. So make sure that you get cooking gauntlets. Now we're going to talk about Torstal Incense Sticks. Now you can buy these or you can make them if you're an Iron Man and basically you use them and each potency level you use provides a 0.5% increase to base XP gain. So for these you can use, you can get a potency level of 4 and you can gain an extra 2% XP. So if you do this, it's just going to give you a little bit of boost of XP. Uh, it doesn't cost too much, so if you don't mind the money, I would definitely recommend using these while you're training cooking because it will boost your XP up a little bit and I think it is well worth it. Next, sticking with XP boosts, we're going to go to an archaeology relic. Now, this is the Inspire Genius Relic, which requires 118 archaeology, which it's a pretty steep requirement, I've got to say. By no means do you need to use this when you're training cooking, but if you do happen to have 118 archaeology uh, and you do happen to have this relic, this will give you a 2% boost in cooking XP. I'd say most people who are going to use this relic are going to already have 99 cooking and they may be going for 120, in which case it is 100% worth it. But if you're just going for 99 and you don't have 118 archaeology, it will definitely be fine without it. It's just a 2% XP boost, so I thought I would mention all the XP boosts I can to help you guys get the most XP the fastest way possible. So, yep, that is the Inspire Genius Relic. The next item you're going to want to use for cooking is the decorated cooking urns. Now, you can buy these off the Grand Exchange or you can make them yourself. And basically, the urn will fill while you're cooking. And when the urn is filled, it will grant you cooking XP. So each urn that you fill will grant you 1,547.5 cooking XP. And these urns are great for if you're just wanting to get as fast of XP as possible. I would recommend that everyone should use them. They're really not that expensive. And the XP boost they're going to give you are gonna, is going to be so good. It's basically just a mini explosion of XP every time you fill one. And these are great to have on your preset for cooking. So I would highly, highly, highly recommend using decorated cooking urns while you are training cooking. So the next thing we're going to talk about is the sous chef's outfit. It will give you bonus XP of 6% while wearing the full set. So this is really nice. It actually gives more XP bonus than the incense sticks and the relic combined. So this is much easier to get as well. You just need to either get it from Treasure Hunter or you can do the Gnome Restaurant mini game, which I don't think it actually takes too long to get a full set. I would definitely recommend getting this set if you haven't already. It will definitely be worth it in the long run if you plan on getting 99 cooking. And if you plan on getting 120, it is a no-brainer. 
So I would recommend you get this as soon as possible and don't worry because you can actually use your cooking gauntlets with it and it will still provide the bonus 6% XP. So now we're gonna talk about arguably the most important thing you should use while training cooking, which is the portable range. Now the portable range is an item from Treasure Hunter, but you can buy it on the GE. It provides 21% more cooking XP while you're cooking. You have a 5% chance of just doubling your food, and it also fills up urns faster. So this is a no-brainer. Basically, you can buy these off the GE and use them yourself while you cook, or you can enter the Portable Friends Chat, which I'll put a link in the description to the Discord with portable stations, and go to a certain world, and people will have portable ranges up, and you can use them yourself. So this is a no-brainer, and definitely, definitely use this along with urns while you're cooking, and it will give you so much more XP. And the next item we're going to talk about is going to play into the portable range even more. Now we're going to talk about the Brooch of the Gods, which is a more newer and expensive item, but it happens to go along with the portable ranges and skilling urns. So basically, this will hold a thousand of each urn, so you don't have to, you know, worry about having your urn in your preset or anything, and it makes portable skill stations twice as likely to trigger. So that means that double food will trigger twice as likely. So if you're cooking something really expensive, you can make a lot of extra money, save or profit a lot of extra money while, while using this. It also has a few of other effects, like you can potentially find rare invention components. It kind of works like the Saren Spirit does. This is not something you need, but if you happen to have it or you've thought about buying it, I think it will be really good for cooking, especially with the portable effect. So now we're gonna get into the actual cooking methods. So this is the very fast, but very expensive method. I thought I would include this option because there are some people that really just like to get as much XP as they can uh, in the fastest amount of time and they just wanna get it over with. And if you had like bonus XP and you use this method, you could potentially get 99 cooking in seven or eight hours. You could get in like, you know, just, an afternoons of work so I thought I would include this method it basically is making jugs of wine so you'll use jugs of water and grapes and you will get up to 800k xp per hour maybe even more which makes it by far one of the best cooking methods in the game now you'll need to make 64,736 of these to get level 99 cooking you can actually start making these at level 35 cooking. So from 35 to 99 cooking, you'll make 64,736 of these and you'll lose around 400 mil. So you will lose a lot of money for this. But I did think I should include it just to give people that have tons of money a method. So now we're gonna start with the way that I recommend you get 99 cooking. I tried to use the fastest methods I could that wouldn't lose an amount of money that was just overwhelming. So using this me these methods, you should come to either profit a little bit or break even a little bit, uh, depending which way and you know which options you use. There's a few options, but for the most part, it's a pretty easy layout. So starting from level one, uh, you can cook crayfish or shrimps. It really doesn't matter. They give the same XP, whatever you can get your hands on. Uh, they give 15k XP an hour, and you will lose about 36k, and you need 64 of these to get from 1 to 15 cooking. Now for the next part, level 15 to 30, you'll be cooking trout. Now, you could also do things like salmon and stuff like that, but... It doesn't really matter too much. You're gonna lose the same amount of money. You're probably gonna get the same XP per hour. So these early levels, you know, you can really do what you like. It's not a huge deal. The method doesn't really matter too much, but I found, you know, trout's a pretty common fish that will be sold. So this should be a pretty safe method. So your XP per hour is gonna be 30 to 60K. You'll lose about 47K from 15 to 30, and you'll need 124 trout. The next method is gonna be from levels 
30 to 52 and you will be cooking sweet corn. Now you're gonna lose a bit of money here, but the XP per hour is pretty good at 181K XP per hour. You'll lose 627K from this and you'll need to cook about 835 sweet corn. Next, from level 52 to 60, you'll be cooking Desert Soul. The XP per hour for this really ramps up and you'll be getting 200k XP per hour. And from 52 to 60, you'll only lose about 200k GP. And the amount you need to cook is 1,054. So we're going to be getting into cooking a lot more things. Once you hit about level 60, uh, the XP rates are going to go up a lot, but you're definitely going to have to cook a lot more fish to level up. So now we come to level 60 to 80. Now you could do a few methods here. I've seen beltfish be pretty popular, but when I looked up beltfish, you would actually lose quite a bit of money doing them. You could also do uh, soulfish as well that we were doing previously, but you would also lose quite a bit of money. And I tried to make this as friendly as possible to people. And honestly, beltfish is marginally better XP than swordfish and you lose way more money. So for the XP or for the money you're going to lose doing beltfish, I just don't think it's worth it. Um, for From level 60 to 80 with swordfish, you'll get around 200k XP per hour, probably more like 215k ish. So uh, probably the same as, as soulfish, but it's going to be way cheaper than both of those options and you'll only lose 163k from all these levels and you'll need 9,631 swordfish from levels 60 to 80. So instead of starting beltfish at level 72, you're of course going to continue doing swordfish from level 60 to 80 and then once you're 80, then you'll start to do beltfish. It is probably the best option that you have. So beltfish, you will cook from levels 80 to 90. Your XP per hour will go up a pretty good amount to 290k XP per hour. But sadly, you're going to lose 11 mil on your way to 90 cooking and you'll need to cook 16,032 beltfish. From level 90 to 94, we'll be cooking shark. Now you need to make sure that you have cooking gauntlets. This whole guide is mostly based around the thought that you'll have cooking gauntlets because they will help dramatically decrease the amount of money you lose and increase your profits. So they're well worth getting, like I said. But at level 94, you'll actually stop burning sharks. But from levels 90 to 94, you're actually not going to burn much shark at all. It's less than 2%, I believe. And your XP per hour will be 360k, and you'll actually profit, finally, of about 2.9 mil. You'll need 9,743 sharks to get to level 94. From levels 94 to 97, we're going to be cooking rock tails. Now that we're level 94, we will not burn rock tails at all during this, so you will get every rock tail you have cooked. The XP per hour is 395k. You will profit 1.6 mil on your way to level 97, and the amount you will need is 9,616 rocktails. Now we are on the home stretch to level 99 cooking. From level 97 to 99, you'll be cooking blue blubber jellyfish. This will be almost the best XP you can get without losing a ton of money. You'll actually get 410k XP per hour. You'll profit a nice 3 mil and the amount you'll need for 99 cooking is 7,846. Now we come to the last part of the guide which is 99 to 120 cooking. So for this you have two options that I found. So the first option is going to be the much more expensive option, but it's nowhere near the, the price wines are. So basically from 99 to 120, you can cook sailfish. Now this will give you about 460K per hour in XP, which is gonna be the most you can get cooking anything other than doing wines, which would be absolutely way too expensive to do to 120. 
but you're going to lose 260 ml GP from 99 to 120 cooking. And you'll need to cook 266,080 sailfish. So it's gonna be a long road and sadly, you're gonna lose a fair amount of money this way. So I didn't think this was the best option in my opinion, but I thought I would include it anyway, just because it is the best XP you can get other than doing wines. Now the last method to get to 120, which I think is obviously the best method, is cooking blue blubber jellyfish. You'll get around 50k XP less an hour doing this, but your profit loss, instead of losing 260 mil, um, you will only, well you won't only, you'll make 120 mil. So I actually didn't believe this when I saw it on the uh, cooking calculator, which I used to figure out how much money you would lose or make based on the GE prices. So I actually checked it myself and blue blubber jellyfish were buying for 7.3k is what you had to buy them for if you were purchasing them and to buy the raw ones you could instantly buy them for 6.2k so that is a margin of about 1.1k so if that holds up you'll actually make well over 300 mil doing this method now of course prices can change so this may not be as much profit you may not it may take you longer to get the blue bubber jellyfish but i think you still should be able to make some profit or at least break even cooking blue blubber jellyfish instead of losing 260 mil cooking sailfish so i would definitely recommend this method if you're going for 120 and i would say to check the margins for sure before you buy any of these fish just to make sure that the profit is correct I hope you guys enjoyed my 1 to 120 cooking guide. I put a lot of effort into it, so if you could leave a like, that would mean a lot. And don't forget to subscribe because I'm going to be coming out with so many more guides, videos. Uh, I'm doing series. I'm just really excited to put out a ton of videos, so make sure you subscribe. And uh, leave a comment and tell me what you'd like to see below. And if you have any questions about this video make sure to leave them below as well if you'd like to support me i actually have memberships now on youtube so you can find that link in the description of course you don't have to support me but if you want to i just want to let you guys know that it's there but i'm really happy just for you guys watching my videos i also have links in the description below to my gaming setup in case you're interested about that i know sometimes people comment about that on my videos so i thought i would leave the links below but I just want to say again, thanks for all the support recently, and I hope this video helps you guys on your quest to 99 or 120 cooking. So thanks for watching, and I'll be back soon.